Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. This year is the 80th anniversary of many of our museum ships, maybe as many of a quarter of the ones in the United States, including several aircraft carriers and, and uh, some battleships. We'll talk about which ones later on in the video, but a very common question that I am asked is why were X group of ships saved and Y group were not. Before we get to that, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Conflict of Nations. Conflict of Nations is a military themed strategy game set in the late 20th and early 21st century, fielding present day and highly modern battlefield technology. So modern, in fact, that old battleships like this or other 80 year old ships don't even play a part in the game. At the core of the game is an exciting, real-time combat system placing players in control of an existing nation of the world and its army, navy, and air forces, pitting them against other gamers in a struggle for world domination. Units are moved across the map in real time, often taking hours to fulfill their assigned mission goals, allowing for a very deep level of strategic planning and integrated tactical execution. A game round usually takes weeks to complete. To ensure economic efficiency and technological edge over one's opponents, each nation must be carefully managed and developed. Researching new units while building the required infrastructure is the key to winning the game. After all, modern war is about logistics as much as combat tactics. Forming lasting alliances or short-lived coalitions is an essential part of the modern military environment. Accordingly, Conflict of Nations allows players to form cooperative clans and teams in an all-out effort to conquer set objectives through the combined force of arms. To take control of your nation today, click the link in the description below and join a game. Some of the 1943 ships that are celebrating 80th uh, commissioning days this year include the first two Iowa-class battleships. Iowa, commissioned back in February, and New Jersey, whose commissioning date is coming up on May 23rd. And we're having a big ceremony on board. Admiral Sam Cox from Naval History and Heritage Command is gonna be the keynote speaker. And we're also gonna have several veterans of the battleship, including, health permitting, at least one uh, plank holder who's in their late 90s. That will be a special day on May 23rd. Likewise, the aircraft carriers, four out of the five of them, all four saved Essex-class aircraft carriers, are celebrating their 80th anniversaries this year. Lexington on the 17th of February, Yorktown on the 15th of April, Intrepid on August 16th, and Hornet on November 29th. It's not just the capital ships that are celebrating their birthdays this year, but also some of the uh, lighter ships. All of the preserved Fletcher-class destroyers are celebrating birthdays this year, including KID coming up later this week on April 23rd, USS De Sullivan's on September 30th, and Cass and Young on December 31st, just squeaking in in 1943. Likewise, some of our submarines, like the Pearl Harbor Avenger herself, USS Bofin, uh, was commissioned on May 1st. And USS Cod was commissioned on June 21st. Cod is also holding a big ceremony and uh, I'm hoping to be able to visit there. That'll be my first time seeing the ship. It's just a little bit difficult to get from Philadelphia to Cleveland. So why is it these mid-war era ships that are saved and not the early war ships that held the line in the Pacific and Atlantic? Well, there's a couple of reasons, but it largely, uh, boils down to the United States was very, very efficient at building ships. We built a tremendous number of ships during World War II, which meant at the end of the war, those early war ships were gotten rid of very quickly. By, by the year 1950, uh, most of the pre-war constructed ships had already been decommissioned and many had already been scrapped. By the time of many museum ships, and remember the heyday of ships being turned into museums is probably the 1970s, although it does start in the late 40s and run all the way up into the, the 2010s. Um, but the heyday when the most of these ships are preserved is probably the 1970s. 
by then, all of these pre-war ships have, have largely been scrapped, so there's a very small number of them that are saved, particularly Navy ships. So again, uh, the, the, new, the number of new ships combined with just how hard these pre-war ships were ridden, because they were holding the line, they did a tremendous amount of service, and by the end of the war, were in really rough material condition to begin with. And when you've got brand new ships that are a generation or two generations more advanced than your pre-war ships and don't have the mileage on them or the battle damage suffered, then it makes sense which ones are saved. The other thing to consider is right at the end of World War II, and this was one of the most costly wars in human history, not just in terms of uh, casualties, but in terms of expenditure of cash. So the military budget is drastically downsized, especially in the United States, where we've just developed nuclear weapons. And in the late 40s and early 50s, it was largely believed that conventional wars weren't going to be fought again because of the existence of these nuclear weapons. And so the Navy, which was not the prime deliverer of nuclear weapons at that time, it was the Army Air Corps, soon to be Air Force, uh, did not need the funding uh, that they had during wartime. And so the Navy had to drastically, drastically cut back on uh, ships that were nearly complete, like the Iowa-class battleship Kentucky, uh, and ships that uh, had already seen hard service were not going to be saved. Many ships that were brand new were put into mothballs right away at the end of construction and only saw service because they were chosen to be converted into missile carrying ships many years later. The Iowa class battleships themselves are fortunate to have been saved at all thanks to uh, them being the last class of battleships we built. Had the United States built more battleships in the 50s or 60s, the Iowas would have been scrapped. There, there's no way we would have retained these ships. Likewise, for the Essex-class aircraft carriers, had the size and expense of supercarriers that succeeded them not been so great, requiring us to keep these smaller hulls around, the Essex-class would have gone away real quick, too. So, if the Navy had have been able to mothball some of these pre-war ships into the 60s or 70s, when many of these museum ships are turned over to their uh, museum organizations, which other ships would you like to have seen saved? Let us know in the comment section down below. Also, for your homework tonight, I want you to go and look at your local museum ship, see what year they were built, and if they've got an anniversary coming up, see if that museum is doing anything special. I was able to list off a couple off the top of my head, but I almost guarantee you that there are more uh, museum ships out there celebrating major milestones this year. And even some of the ones I listed, I'm not quite sure how they're celebrating it. So look that up. Let us know in the comments section down below. Um, it would certainly be worthwhile for you guys to go out to these museum ships during their special anniversaries and help celebrate with their staff and volunteers. The only reason any of these museum ships have made it to 80 years old, or older in some cases, is because of your support and the support of folks like you. Remember to come out and see Battleship New Jersey on May 23rd at 11 o'clock for our ceremony. There's a link in the description to uh, some more information about our ceremony. There's also a link in the description to Conflict of Nations, who sponsored this video. Be sure to check them out and join me on there playing some games. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. We really appreciate your support. You can always like, share, and subscribe so that more people find about our museum and channel to continue to support us. Thanks for watching.